Zero Accounting Software 2023 free 30 day trial. It's time to become an accounting hero with Zero 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in the Zero Accounting Software webpage. That's at zero.com or xero.com, xero.com. They have prominently displayed on their webpage up top and down below on the left hand side. Try Zero for free. If you already have a login, you can go to the login up top. If we click on try zero for free, we have some data input to put into the system. They want the first name, last name, email, phone number, location with a drop down. Here are the various locations, verifying that you're not a robot and then checking off. I've read and agreed to the terms of use, privacy, notice and offer details. Now, generally, once you uh, sign in, for zero, you'll basically have a zero dashboard. So once that happens, after you go into the zero homepage, you can then go into the login and that login location will give you the capacity to be practicing either with the demo or possibly starting up another company file, possibly at that point, having the option to have a 30 day free trial for that new company file. So once logged in, we're basically in our zero homepage, our custom zero homepage. It says, hi, whoever you logged in as, in my case, Bob. And then we've got the information for the company information down below. If we wanted to practice with the demo company file, then we could select the demo file down here. After entering data into the demo file, it's quite nice because you can reset the demo file or keep the data that you have adjusted within it. And you can also change the country within the demo file. On the right hand side, what we're going to do here, because we want to start a new company file and practice data input from scratch, we want to add an organization. So in the add organization, we're then going to say that this is going to be a business of, let's give it. So I'm going to give the company name, get great guitars. We're going to, we're going to be practicing the selling of inventory, which in our case will be guitars. We can imagine we're in a store type of selling of setting. So we have to track the inventory. We'll do so on a perpetual inventory basis. And we'll also have some service items that we will work in there, including possibly guitar lessons. So we could see the differences between selling inventory and having service items. Now I'm going to select an industry. I want to take uh, other, other store based retailing because I basically want if they give me a chart of accounts to have a chart of accounts that's going to have uh, compatibility with selling inventory. So if you choose different industries, sometimes zero might uh, be able to populate or provide you a chart of accounts as like a baseline that will will help you to start out that might be uh, lined up to that particular industry, which can be nice. United States is what I'm going to choose here. Note that if you're in another location, the double entry accounting system will be basically the same. The double entry accounting system is the same. What's confusing from location to location is one, of course, you're going to have a different currency, but that's the, the concept of the currency will be much the same. It's just the dollar amounts will be different. So the concept is still good. The other thing that gets confusing is taxes and uh, sales tax or usage taxes can complicate things because they're going to be different from location to location, as well as uh, payroll taxes are where uh, complications uh, come in. So in any case, I'll going to go with the United States. Uh, do you have employees? I'll say yes here. I'm going to verify that I'm not a robot. And then down here, we can buy now or start the trial. I'm going to try to start a trial from here. Uh, notice before I do that, if it says you're coming from QuickBooks, move your data into zero for free. So if you have a prior accounting software, 
uh, system, then the question is, do you want to pull all that data from a prior accounting system into the zero system, which could be great because you can run prior reports and things like that. However, it also means there's a lot of data when you first start the file. The other methods you might use is to say, look, I'm going to I'm going to cut things off as of a cutoff date from the prior accounting system and then put them into the current accounting system as of a particular point in time and then move forward from there. So that's what we're going to imagine doing here. We'll have some numbers, a balance sheet as of the end of last year that we're going to put into the current accounting system and then start our accounting for the current time frame here going forward. So I'm going to go ahead once again and click that again because it keeps <laughs> clicking off. It's, uh, it's, then I'll start the free trial. Here we go. So then it says here, hi, let's get set up. Use this dashboard to get an instant overview of how your business is tracking. Go ahead and set it up. So they've got the little watch overview of the main features down below if you want to check that out. So nothing has yet been entered into the system, but we should have a chart of account that has been set up for us at this time. And we could find that by going to the accounting up top and then go down to the chart of accounts. And we see we have this message here from Zero. You're using the retail organization chart of accounts. You can customize this, find out how in our help center. So in other words, when we set up the company file, we told Zero what type of industry we are in and it tried to give us a chart of accounts which should line up to that industry. So for our case, we, we indicated an industry that has inventory. So we would expect then to see an inventory account and uh, some kind of cost of goods sold account down below. So that's good. We have those items here. Note the chart of accounts might not be perfect. We might be saying, hey, I would like to customize my own chart of accounts. We can do that. We can add accounts and we can uh, remove accounts or make accounts inactive. But as a general rule, it might be a good practice to say, I'm going to put my chart of accounts together based on what is recommended by zero on the industry and then as I start doing my data input I'm going to keep going back to my chart of accounts and try to see if they have given me an account that is applicable to the transaction I want to put in place if it is then I will use that chart of accounts and oftentimes the confusion comes down here with the expense categories because the expense categories are the areas where we have the biggest kind of variety or different options in terms of accounts we might be using oftentimes and obviously there's more expense accounts than any other account type because when we're paying money out we're paying for all the different things we need whereas when the money's coming in it's usually for a specific thing we're doing in terms of generating uh the revenue so uh, we we could then check and see if there's an account here that we like if there is then we'll start using that account as we do the data input on the transaction. If there is not, then we might want to look for an account that is similar in nature and then go into it and possibly just adjust it, change the name to what we think is most applicable. And then if there's no account here at all for us to use, that's when I would say we would want to add an account at that point in time. After we do that for a couple months of data input, then the accounting should be somewhat repetitive because usually the, the accounting is somewhat repetitive and we can then go back into this chart of accounts and trim it down, hedge it down, possibly removing or making inactive those accounts that we're not using. So we'll dive into some more details on that as we start to enter data in future presentations. I'm going to close this out.